wanna be stronger. Welcome back to another YouTube video of mine. If you're new to this channel, my name is Melenga, and please do stay and uh, check out my other content. In this week's video, we'll be looking at a story about how a priest's advice ended a woman's life. So to begin with, the woman in question was married to someone who has a military background, right? So that's the first thing to take away from this. Um, the woman was married to her husband for about 36 years. And she had a secret that was weighing heavily on her shoulders. So the woman um, with a Catholic background goes to her priest to let him know what was going on and what had been eating at her soul for so long. And she tells the priest, and this is the big secret. The secret is that her firstborn daughter, who is 30 years old, is not her husband's child. She had the child outside their marriage and told their husband a lie for about 30 years that that was actually his child, but the child was not his. So the priest goes on to tell the woman that she needs to confess to her husband and let him know exactly what the truth is, but that she should tell her husband the truth on the day when they are the most happiest. So the woman returns home and waits for their 36th um, wedding anniversary. And she tells her husband uh, the secret on that particular day. The report says that um, on that day, uh, you could tell that there was something that was wrong. But um, the couple was just trying to show face that they were happy um, and th that there was nothing going on. So at the end of the day, when they retired to their room, her husband went on to get his rifle and end the woman's life. So before we continue, let's look at the four people that, the four groups of people that are involved in the story. We have the husband, the wife, the priest, and their children. So those are the four parties that are involved in this story. So, right now, the husband um, has made an irrational decision. He's angry, he's upset that his wife could go about lying to him for the past 30 years. He's angry, he's enraged, he's made a mistake that will haunt him for the rest of his life. He's also very upset that the wife could have been also lying about so many other things. And then the second party that's involved um, is the wife. She was burdened so much by this secret um, that now that she's actually told the secret, it's ended up ending her life. The good thing about um, the wife is that she actually confessed and she told her secret. The third party involved is the priest. The priest did the right thing according to his doctrine. They are taught that you should tell the truth and that you should confess your sins to one another. And he's gone about this so many other times. He's given advice to so many groups of people. So it was only rational for him to tell the woman to confess, right? And we have the fourth party, who's the children. The report further actually says that after the man ended the woman's life, that he was rushed to the university teaching hospital here in Osaka. His children, the rest of his children, had badly beaten him up. And the report said that he was admitted to the university teaching hospital, but was under arrest and was um, waiting to be charged for murder. So now this is the aftermath. The children have found out what has happened. Uh, the man has taken his wife's life. He's definitely feeling a lot of anger still, but now he's got guilt. Guilt that he'll never get over for the rest of his life. And he's also mourning 
the loss of his daughter. He had gone about telling everybody, my daughter has graduated school, my daughter did this, my daughter took her first step, not knowing that I was not his daughter. So he's mourning the loss of his daughter because that was never his child to begin with. We have the wife who's no longer with us anymore. And obviously, it's sad because her life has been cut short. And we have a priest who obviously heard about it as well through the media, through the news, through the newspapers. And now we have a man who is scared to tell people about what to do because in his mind, he knows that the same thing could happen to someone else. So he could be filled with fear, right? And then we have, a ch we have the children. The children have not only been single often, but they've been double often. They can never trust their father again. He's ruined their lives. They're filled with trauma. The trauma that has just begun, that hasn't even begun to take root in their lives. All this happening could also cause future generational curses. They could end up finding themselves in relationships that are as abusive or end up in a life being taken. Um, I found out this story from a sister of mine and I just thought I should share it on the channel because these things happen each and every day. And especially in the African household, um, when someone has done something like this, if, especially if it's a man, the woman is told to man up or actually woman up and take in the, the child from outside wedlock and raise the child like their own. When tables are turned, um, the man can take his own, you know, can take something that he would have probably done himself. But because it's, it's his wife, he's feeling so betrayed that he ends up ending her life. That's the one thing I don't like about the double standard. A man is allowed to cheat outside the home, but a, when a woman does the same thing, she's a problem or the man ends up leaving the home. But usually when it's in a woman's case, she stays, you know? So in conclusion, I would like to say it's always good to learn from other people's mistakes and what they've gone through. So my concluding remarks are that the man and the woman, the husband and the wife, were wrong for what they did. The woman was wrong for hiding a secret for that long um, to her husband. The man was wrong for taking the wife's life. That's not how you go about things. And then for the priest, I feel that he was wrong, not in his giving advice, but in the way he handled the situation. He needed to involve a third party or a fourth party in this entire conversation. Elders needed to be called in from both sides of the woman and the man's family to handle the situation, not giving the woman um, all the power and all the control because she didn't have any power to begin with. And um, my other point to take home is actually that we need to just go to God sometimes when we've got certain sins because confessing other sins to a fellow human being who's only going to judge you for what you've done um, sometimes it's always sometimes it's better to just go to God confess your sins uh, cry to him and tell him this has been weighing heavy on me and pray to him and ask him how to go about it and he will show you the right way to go about it. And the last thing is that we need to know the people that we're married to, and we need to know how to take them. I say take them in, you need to know how to deliver information to them. If you know that the person you're married to easily gets angered, easily gets offended, you don't tell them something when you're just the two of them. You have to involve other people. And I am sure that the woman never expected that the story was going to end this way. And it's so sad. And I just pray that the children are able to find peace one day and that they're able to forgive their father. Um, let me know down in the comment section your thoughts on the story. 
who do you think was right who do you think was wrong how do you think the situation should have been handled in the correct way um as i said before and as i always say in all my videos thank you for watching another youtube video of mine bye bye